Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week I want to share with you one of my favorite fall blooming perennials that's hitting its peak right now, white snake root. The Latin name is Agaritina altissima um, and this plant is in the Asteraceae family, so the Aster and Daisy family. And I learned it as um, Eupatorium rugosum. It's since been um, put into that different genus, um, but it does look a lot of like um, superficially um, like the bone sets and uh, Joe pie weed. But I'll show you kind of what its distinctive characteristics are. It is a beautiful fall flowering um, native perennial form of shady to part shade um, wooded habitats. And you can find it on sites that are both degraded or of fairly high quality. As far as habitat goes, it likes uh, moist to dry mesic woodlands, um, wooded borders, thickets, seeps. You can find it along bluffs, um, shady meadows along riverbanks, um, along the edges of power line rights of way, um, and pasture fence rows where you have adjacent uh, woody vegetation um, in both deciduous and cedar swamps. Um, in ravines and along uh, forested river floodplains. And as far as range goes, you can find it in the eastern half of the United States, um, up into Canada, south all the way to Texas and Florida. And in Michigan, it's mostly in the southern half of the lower peninsula, though it creeps up along the coastline, um, and in the western half of the upper peninsula. Uh, as far as horticulture goes, uh, this particular species does best in um, part sun to fairly shady conditions, um, especially on dry sites, it will not take uh, full sun. The, the leaves will yellow um, and wilt. It likes moist to dry mesic soils and can take a range of textures from loam um, to clay loam or sandy loam on either extreme. It's easy to grow um, and it has a fibrous root system and it'll spread vegetatively by underground rhizomes um, or it readily reseeds. For identification, um, it does get two to four feet tall um, and it has a rounded stem, not a square stem and opposite leaves. So that round stem kind of helps you tell it apart from um, things in the mint family, which also have opposite leaves. And those leaves overall are um, pretty triangular in shape, especially at the base of the plant. They can even be almost chordate with like a heart-shaped base to them. And the leaves get smaller as you go um, up the plant and they are up to five inches long and three and a half inches wide. Um, and then the leaves get more lance shaped as you go um, up the plant. Their margin is what is called uh, cranate um, serrate, and that means just sort of rounded tooth. That's a fancy way of saying rounded tooth. They're mostly hairless and they have three primary veins. And those the general vein pattern is very impressed, which makes um, the veins look sunken on the top. And if you flip the leaf over, it's um, very ridgy. You can see that network of veins very easily on the bottom. But these um, triangular shaped leaves um, and then fairly long petioles, um, a half inch to two and a half inches long is how you would tell this apart from um, bone sets and um, Joe pie weeds, which have short or no petioles and much narrower um, leaf shape. The flower heads are branched multiple times and rather flat topped, and um, they can be two to six inches across. And each flower head um, is composed, you've got these little flower heads here, um, they're half inch across, and it's composed of uh, 10 to 30 disc florets. So each one of these has 10 to 30 um, disc florets, 
that are bright white with five lobed corollas and bright white styles. So very striking um, flower. And it has no ray florets. So this would be like an aster or a daisy where you only have the center flowers and not those longer petals or ray florets around the margin. Uh, this species blooms in late summer through fall, so July through September, and uh, it blooms for about two months, so a nice long um, bloom time. And it's one of the last wildflowers to bloom in the fall. Um, the flowers are fragrant, and um, fruit formation occurs. They're small black akines with a tuft of white hairs, and they are wind um, dispersed. For faunal associates, the nectar of the flowers attracts a great diversity of insects, everything from leaf cutting bees, helicted bees, wasps, flies, butterflies, and moths. Um, and bees will also come and collect the pollen from the flowers. Um, certain moth species do use this plant as their larval host plant. In general, the foliage um, is bitter and highly toxic, and so it will be avoided by um, mammalian herbivores. And um, if you kind of look up this plant, you'll read a lot about um, sickness in cattle. So cattle will eat it in pastures that are overgrazed, if that's kind of the last thing left. Um, and uh, um, there's chemicals um, that cause what is called trembles, which is a fatal disease. And those um, toxins grouped together are called uh, tremetol, and um, they are fat soluble and can be transmitted um, in the milk of um, cows to humans, causing uh, what is known as milk sickness. Um, and that can be fatal. So, um, Many settlers during the 19th century, like thousands of people, um, succumbed to this milk sickness. Um, perhaps the most famous being uh, Abraham Lincoln's mother um, in 1818. And it wasn't um, until later a uh, frontier doctor, uh, Hannah Pierce um, Hobbs Bixby, documented the toxicity of this plant um, and that, that movement of toxins um, from um, dairy milk um, to humans. And she learned that from an elderly Shawnee woman. So I thought, I thought that little bit of history was cool. That was something new I learned as I researched this um, plant for the post. So as far as using this plant in the landscape, uh, you definitely don't wanna put it in your pastures where you have cattle, sheep, goats, horses, um, anything like that because of the toxicity but it's certainly a great plant for um, shady sites, uh, shady rain gardens and borders that you're trying to fill in, um, wooded edges or places that you can let it readily naturalize. This is along uh, my woodland edge at home and it's just gorgeous. Um, I seeded it initially and it's spread and uh, filled in really nicely. Um, some consider it an aggressive native plant. It is very good at, at reproducing. So um, either put it where you don't mind that it moves and fills in, or um, you can uh, deadhead, cut off the flowers, and get it before it goes to seed to help um, keep it from seeding into areas where you don't want it. But honestly, this plant, um, the leaves are very distinctive. Um, it's pretty easy to recognize and just hand pull quickly out of the places where uh, you don't want it. But it is, um, you know, a, a great plant uh, for wildlife support and um, can take uh, average soils and, and even drier soils and shade, which can be a, a tough set of site conditions. So I hope you get out, uh, take a walk in the woods and maybe see some white snake root this week. Take care.